During Q4 of last year, I was able to generate over $10 million in sales with Google Ads across all of the e-commerce businesses that I work with. In today's video, I'm doing a full breakdown on the entire strategy that I used to get those kind of results. It's known that most e-commerce businesses generate majority, if not most of their revenue during Q4 each and every single year. And so if you don't already have a strategy in place, for Google Ads, you're gonna to wanna to pay attention. Here we are inside of one of the manager accounts that we use. This account is currently showcasing the results across a few of the e-commerce businesses that we work with, all combined in one. What we're currently looking at is the results from November 1st to December 31st. This is a combination of both Google and YouTube ads. Now, you can see here, we spent $400,000 on ads. We generated 23,000 conversions. From this, we generated $10 million in sales, and we ended up with a 25X return on ad spend. Majority of this spend was on Google Shopping, but we also spent quite a significant amount across non-brand Google search, also YouTube ads, and then also uh, display and Pmax as well. I'm not gonna cover the specific campaigns for these results right now, but I am gonna go over the entire strategy that we followed. Now that we went over the results, let's dive in here. So the first thing I wanna start off with is with the analysis. So every single year, before we actually start building out any of our Black Friday, Cyber Monday campaigns, or any promotional campaigns in general, we like to look back historically at how things performed the previous year. If you're an e-commerce business that's newer and you don't have this history to work with, then obviously it's a little bit different, but this is assuming that you actually have at least a year's worth of history to look back on. What I like to do is take the time to look back and see, okay, what campaigns did we use last year? What worked and what didn't, right? We like to look at how did these campaigns perform, right? And based off that performance, we like to set benchmarks and a baseline of performance of what we can probably expect for this current year. I like to do this because we like to have an idea of what we can expect from our Google ads, specifically during these promotional time periods. Usually we like to outline projections for every single promotion that we run and what we can expect. And we like to see how we're performing against those projections. This is one of the first things we like to do because we like to be able to have an idea of what we can expect from all the campaigns and all of our overall efforts for these promotions. Now, moving on to get into more specifics, we like to look through what worked specifically that led to us having a winning campaign or an ad, and then what led to us having a losing campaign or an ad. And so usually what this looks like is for us, we like to document all the tests that we do, whether it's with different campaigns, different ads, everything, right? And so ideally we also document all the tests that we run. And so what I like to do is look back at, okay, well, where did we see wins come from, right? Whether it's with specific ad copy tests or specific display creative tests, whatever the case is. And then we like to double down on this and create more variations of what has already worked in the past. And then we like to look at what underperformed, right? And try to come up with an, an hypothesis as to why that actually ended up leading to a loss with that specific experiment. We like to keep everything documented so that we can very easily look back at things. And so usually the insights we gather from here is what we use to kind of get started right with planning for this upcoming year and so again most of the time i have seen that you can avoid wasting a lot of time energy and efforts by simply taking the time to look through the current data that you have to work with based on previous year's performances the next thing we like to do is really measure year over year search results. But to be even more specific, inside of Google Ads, you can actually look at what's called your auction insights. And what you can do is you can look at competitive performance on a year over year basis. You can see where you're ranking in the overall ad auction compared to your other competitors and where other competitors are ranking as well year over year. You can see what competitors are getting more aggressive with their bids and their overall spend on Google. You can also look for opportunities where maybe you're getting less visibility because another competitor maybe is bidding more aggressively than you are. During this time of the year, the last thing that you wanna do is be underperforming against other competitors when it comes to these ad auctions, especially if you've had good performance in the past and you have a better product, you have a better offer, et cetera. And so I like to measure this to really get an idea of how aggressive we're gonna to have to be this year year with the overall approach that we're going to take and the bids that we're setting when it comes to the current promotions that we're going to run. Because typically what we see is that year over year, overall costs do typically tend to go up. You usually can't do a full comparison year over year and trying to compare the exact cost you got last year versus the cost you're going to get this year, because there usually will almost be a difference. But it is good to have an idea of who's getting more aggressive in the competitor landscape, because you want to make sure to keep an eye on that, to know how aggressive you have to be and make sure that you actually get enough visibility with your ads. So that's one of the first things that I like to do. Next is we like to identify market gaps 
We like to look for ways to differentiate our brand compared to other competitors, whether that's with the offer that we're running, the creatives that we're using, or the targeting. One of the resources that we use for this is we have this database that has a combination of all the offers that were ran across many different e-commerce brands back in 2023. This includes many different brands across many different categories like apparel, beauty and cosmetics, children, fashion, food and beverage, and more. I like to share this with all the e-commerce businesses that we work with so we can strategize and see if there's any way that we can get unique with the offers that we can use this year to hopefully try to stand out compared to what other competitors are going to be offering, right? Based on what they offered last year. This has been a resource that's been super helpful because this has an overall outline of the exact offer that was ran for Black Friday, the exact offer that was ran for Cyber Monday, whether they use a discount code, whether they didn't, whether it was a site-wide discount or whether it was like a free gift with purchase right and so we get options and we get to have the ability to get creative with how we can um come up with unique ways to have our offer stand out those are one of the first resources that we kind of use when it comes to just kind of planning out and looking over year over year performance the last piece here is we like to optimize to really find ways to stand out versus competitors, right? Obviously, every single year, you have hundreds of new e-commerce businesses coming into the landscape, if not thousands. Obviously, this is a space that's only growing year over year. It's good to run a comparison on you know, who your current competitors are this year versus last year, because you may have new competitors in the space, and you wanna find ways to make sure that you have a good understanding of what these newer competitors are doing in case they are outranking you, whether it's with their Google search ads or their Google shopping ads, because you wanna make sure that you're putting your best foot forward to make sure that you can capture as much traffic as you can going into this holiday season. Overall, those are some of the main highlights for this initial analysis section that you know we typically like to go through. The next component of this overall strategy is preparation. Most e-commerce businesses usually have a full outline of the promotions that they usually like to focus on for their business. If you don't already have this, I would say this is very important to have because this is how you can basically create these peak moments within your business, right? And now from my experience, every single business has its own unique peak days or peak promotion that they follow based on like their niche and what makes the most sense for their business. But most e-commerce businesses are usually following these core peak day promotions for the end of the year. So most businesses are doing like an early Black Friday sale. They're doing a Black Friday sale, of course, a Cyber Monday sale, a holiday sale, and then a New Year's sale. Now, there may be some others, like for example, we're working with one business that they have a very large audience of army veterans, right? And so for them, they celebrate Veterans Day and that's actually their peak day promo in November, right? So they don't do an early Black Friday sale, but every single business probably has their own unique promotions that they focus on, but most are following these core ones, right? One of the first things we like to do is outline the exact dates that we're gonna follow for each one because you wanna take the time to prepare everything in advance. And I'll show you guys exactly what I mean by that. So the next thing that I like to do is outline what needs to be prepared for each of the types of ads we're gonna be running. So for example, for Google search, we like to write all the ads in advance to avoid any last minute mistakes and to ensure ad approvals. When it comes to Google search or most ads, that you create, they typically take some time to be reviewed by Google and before they actually go live. And so because of that, you wanna make sure that you're preparing the campaigns beforehand and all the ads so that you can submit it for review with Google. Typically what we like to do is 24 hours before the sale even goes live, we'll submit it to Google, get everything reviewed, get everything approved, and then we'll turn off the campaign and we'll schedule it to go live that day, right? This is gonna help you avoid that you have any delays on your ads actually running for any promotion that you're running. The next thing we'd like to do is when it comes to the ad copy for Google search, during peak promotional time periods, we like to stick to the fundamentals and really avoid like getting too complex with the overall strategy and approach that we use. And then we also like to incorporate sale references in our ad copy. So for example, if we're gonna do an early Black Friday sale, usually our Google search ads are gonna have headlines or descriptions that are gonna say something along the lines of early Black Friday sale, and then it's gonna follow with whatever the specifics of the sale is, whether it's a discount, a site-wide sale, whatever the case is. For Google search, the next thing we like to do is build urgency and scarcity. Now, one of the ways you can do that is you can actually leverage these specific types of dynamic headlines in your ads, right? Where once you set them up and you time it with how long your sale is gonna run for, it automatically dynamically updates every single day, showing how much, whether it's time or days are left for this promotion, right? So this works really well to add in that scarcity aspect. Also, what we like to do is create promotional extensions, right? It looks like this here, right? Where you can 
kind of see this extension show up underneath your Google search ad. And then it shows the exact promotion that you're running. Also, we like to create site link extensions. For example, this extension you see here underneath the search ad that says shop Dyson Black Friday and then has a short description. We like to always include this because this helps all of the Google search ads stand out. For Google search, that's majority of the prep that we do. Of course, you know, we're outlining specific ad copy for specific products if there's multiple different products or different product categories. But this is a general overview of what we typically do for Google search. We use a sheet that looks like this, where we basically outline what keyword are we gonna be targeting? Is this gonna be a keyword just for the brand as a whole? Or is this gonna be a keyword for a specific product? And based off of that, we then outline the specific headlines for that keyword and the specific descriptions for that keyword. And then for these extensions, we also have a sheet that looks like this, where we basically outline all the extensions that we're gonna use. We like to create different variations to test out different copy with these extensions to see what works best. And this is typically where we outline everything in advance, right? So that we're fully prepared to roll out all these tests across all the e-commerce businesses that we work with. Moving on for Google Shopping, obviously for e-commerce, this is where majority of the efforts usually go to. One of the main things that need to be done with Google Shopping, assuming that you're already doing testing throughout the year with your Google Shopping listings and you already know what titles work the best, what images work the best, then the only thing you really need to do is make sure that you set up promotions inside of your Google Merchant Center. Depending on the promotion that you're running, for example, if you set up the promotion inside of your Merchant Center on your Google Shopping ads, it'll show here free gift with purchase, right? If you're running a discount code for your offer, then it'll show like this, where it'll show the discounted price that you get with the code. And then if you're simply running like a discount automatically applied sale, then um, the only thing that'll happen is it'll show your price like crossed out on the right hand side and then it'll show the new sale price here with this little overlay that shows a sale on your Google Shopping listings. But this is one thing that you 100% want to do. There's a lot of low hanging fruit by simply, you know, creating these promotions inside of Google Merchant Center because again, majority of the spend for most e-commerce businesses typically is going to be here with your Google Shopping ads. And so there's a lot of opportunity on simply making sure that you have these promotions set up in the first place. If you're an e-commerce business and you're looking to get help with setting any of this up, down below this video, there's going to be a link in the description where you can actually book in a call with me and my team. On that call, we can get to know more about you and your business. And then from there, we can actually outline a lot of what I'm covering in this video, right? What we're gonna do for your peak day promotions for Black Friday, Cyber Monday, or any holiday sale you have coming up. We'll basically walk you through the entire process that we use for all the current e-commerce businesses that we work with. Moving on to Google Display, it's fairly simple and straightforward, right? Really what you need here is, you want to have Google display banners that you create. Basically, this is an example here. Some of the most important elements are your sale, right? Of course. So if you're going to do a Black Friday sale, you have that in a big headline and then you would follow it with whatever the discount or sale is. I like to also have the logo included in this image. And then I like to also have a button that says like shop now as well included in the image. And so this is just a quick example of like a template that you could basically follow and use for your Google display ads. Google display ads are very important and play a big role for any peak promotions that you're going to have because Google display covers 70% of the web. You know, there's so much visibility and coverage that you can get by simply running Google Display Ads. Again, very low hanging fruit on making sure that you have these created. Now, I didn't include YouTube here, but I should have. Not every single business that we work with has like unique creatives that they're using for videos for Meta or TikTok. Statistically, we always see that the best performance for videos typically come from the evergreen creatives that are being ran throughout the year for Meta and TikTok. If you don't have YouTube ads running, I would say at the bare minimum, you should be running YouTube ads for remarketing during this time of the year. It's absolutely crucial, right? It plays a big role in our overall strategy. Almost every single business has an audience that's on YouTube. I have very rarely came across any business that does not have an audience on YouTube. So that's one of the things I wanted to say. For YouTube specifically though, usually what we'll do is, you know, if we do have a business that's getting specific creatives made for their upcoming promotion, then we will take that creative and we will then upload that creative onto YouTube and we will use that creative on YouTube specifically. But not every single business does it, so I didn't want to like include it here, but at the bare minimum, you should be running YouTube remarketing for sure. I can guarantee you that you will get good results as long as you have really good creatives, right, when it comes to YouTube. Moving on to campaign development. Like I said, we like to break things up into phases and we like to prepare ahead of time. So when it comes to development, one of the things we like to do is, again, before the sale, like for example, right now it is October 25th and we have pretty much majority of the Google search campaigns outlined already on sheets like this, 
for all the e-commerce businesses that we work with. Going into next week, the first week of November, we will be building out these campaigns, right? And we're gonna have them ready already because some of the e-commerce businesses that we work with, they're starting their Black Friday sales the second week of November. So we need to have these prepared a week in advance. Moving on to our Black Friday, Cyber Monday, PMAX and shopping campaigns. Same thing here. We're going to have these prepped first week of November. Same thing for the display campaigns and the YouTube campaigns. And so overall, the main takeaway for the campaign development is that you want to have all the assets that you need ready, right? way in advance. You want to make sure that you have the dates also prepared for all of the promotions and when they go live. And then you want to make sure that ideally, just to be safe, we like to have things prepared early rather than late because sometimes some of the e-commerce businesses we work with, you know, they, they have last minute changes, whether it's like an inventory change or an offer change, right? Make sure you take the time to prepare everything in advance and that you have everything ready to go come first week of November. Moving on to the development phase. So here is really where we're building out the campaigns and we're adding in these specifics to each and every single one of the campaigns. What I mean by the specifics is we're layering in and creating our remarketing audiences. Now, what we have found to work best across all the businesses that we work with is creating different remarketing audiences depending on the action that someone has taken on the website. So for example, we create remarketing audiences for website visitors, for people that have added to cart, for people that have initiated checkout, for people that have purchased. Apart from creating each of those audiences, what we also do is we create the different time windows for those audiences. So we'll say, hey, website visitors, seven days, 14 days, 30 days, 90 days, etc. And the reason why we like to do that is because we have found that different audiences with different time windows perform differently, right? So somebody that has recently engaged with the business in the last seven days, for example, typically converts higher and at a much better return on ad spend than somebody that has engaged with the business 90 days ago. That doesn't mean that we don't want to advertise to the people that engage with the business 90 days ago. It just means that the way that we want to advertise to that specific audience is a little bit different, right? Because we don't want to pay the same as what we pay to acquire or to remarket to a customer that has recently engaged with the business because somebody that has recently engaged is a lot warmer than somebody that has engaged in the last 90 days, right? So that's just a quick example. So again, what I would recommend is segmenting your audiences based on the different actions that they've taken on the website and then also segmenting by the different time windows. We have seen those to work extremely well. Then obviously, you know, once we have those layered into the campaigns and we're actually going through and launching the campaigns, when we launch the campaigns, we're making sure to enable all the promotion extensions. Same thing with the other site link and call out extensions. We're making sure to get those all scheduled out and going live. And then also we're making sure that all the promotions inside of Google Merchant Center are actually live. So what we typically do is we'll go ahead and launch the campaigns, launch all these extensions, launch all the promotions inside of Google Merchant Center, and then we'll review to make sure that every Everything is actually live, right? Because sometimes we've seen times where we schedule things to run, but something happens and they don't end up actually running on the day or time that we scheduled for. So we'd like to do just a safety check to make sure that everything actually is live and running. Once we have things running, then we like to look through and see, you know, what's working, what's not. If we can make decisions on you know, what keywords are performing or what search terms are underperforming, then, you know, we'll make those adjustments. These campaigns are going to be new campaigns and you're not going to have a ton of data. So there's not going to be like drastic optimizations you can make. This is why it's important to build these campaigns based on the insights and data that you have from the previous year. For example, if we know statistically that a certain keyword or a certain search term typically leads to us not getting good results or is unprofitable for us, and, you know, we will make sure to exclude that as a negative keyword across across our Google search ads, our Google shopping ads, because we don't want to spend money during this time of the year on keywords or search terms that have historically been unprofitable. Right. What we'll always do is we'll optimize around sales first. If there's an ad that has spent sufficient and has no sales, we'll turn it off. If something has spent enough and we're getting really good sales and it's profitable, then we'll typically look to allocate more budget. If there is no sales yet, then we'll look to optimize based on our cost per click and our click through rate, right? Because again, these campaigns, since they're running for a such short time period, there's not going to be much data that we can optimize based off of. When it comes to scaling, usually this is something that we're dynamic about. Usually what we're doing is that during peak days, so for example, the day of Black Friday, we are allocating the max budget to all of our campaigns that we can allocate. That's why, again, going back to the planning and having the benchmarks and the KPIs is important because you wanna know what's the max that you can spend on these promotions. So we're starting off the day of Black Friday, like really going all in with our max budgets. Typically what we do is Saturday and Sunday mornings, we will scale down budgets because we typically see that you don't get as good performance in the morning, but then we will look to scale up 
every hour from 2 p.m. EST on. And we do the same thing on Cyber Monday, right? We'll look to max out on Cyber Monday after 2 p.m. EST because typically Cyber Monday, what works the best is towards the second half of the day. Again, this is just a structure that we follow. We have always seen that it's best to be dynamic about it. I haven't seen as good results on just like setting max budgets and just like letting it run as is throughout the entire days of like the peak promos. So instead, we like to take control and really control our budgets throughout this entire process. Ideally, that's everything that I think should be prioritized when it comes to actually outlining and fully executing on your Q4 strategy. Again, there are some more specifics, right? Every single business has its own unique needs. This is more of like an evergreen strategy that I think could work across many different businesses. However, you know, there are different businesses that do require more specific needs. Like I said, we have one business that we work with that their peak promo isn't actually on Black Friday. For them, their peak sale is their Veterans Day sale. So for them, we're following this scaling strategy around the first week of November, right? So if you don't have any strategy in place for how you're approaching your Google ads for Q4, then this is going to be super helpful compared to not having a strategy at all. I hope that this helps. I tried to include as much as I could. Um, again, again, I think that as long as you take the time to review your past year's data and leverage the insights from you know what worked and what didn't, and then really prepare around that, you should see really good results here, right? When it comes to building out these campaigns, probably the most important thing here is making sure that you have the dates in place, making sure that you're taking advantage of like these additional extensions that allow you to really um, highlight the sale that you have running. Also making sure that you have all the assets ready way beforehand, right? So you can avoid any issues with like delays on getting your ads running. As long as you're doing all these things and as long as you're leveraging all the placements across Google ads, right? You're going to get results. Typically the e-commerce businesses that I see that don't get results with their Google ads are the ones that don't take advantage of leveraging specific peak day promotion ads across Google search, across shopping and PMAT across display, across YouTube. Those are typically the businesses that miss out on all of the opportunities across Google. Then when it comes to building out the campaigns, I would say, you know, some of the biggest contributors here are making sure that you have all the remarketing audiences built out. This is going to play a huge role because of course, you know, majority of the efforts should be on leveraging your remarketing audiences that you've built out throughout the entire year, right? Most of our efforts go towards remarketing. Yes, we focus on new customer acquisition, but during this time of the year, we mainly focus on remarketing, right? Because we want to make sure that we're fully capitalizing on the audiences that we built out throughout the entire year. Also making sure that you're dynamic about your budgets, I think that will be crucial here. And then of course, you know, just making sure that you're keeping an eye on performance, right? If something is not working, making sure that you're cutting it so that you're not just burning budget. If things are working, making sure that you're pushing as much as you can based on uh, you know, the budgets that you have available. And so overall, these are all the things that again, we did last year and that we're currently gonna be doing this year to make sure that we have the best possible turnout for Q4, right? I think that this year is actually gonna be bigger than last year, but we're feeling pretty good about the overall approach and how things are looking so far. So that's pretty much it for this video. If you're an e-commerce business and you're looking to get help with your Google ads, down below this video, there's gonna be a link in the description where you can actually book in a call with me and my team. On that call, we'll get to know more about you and your business, and we'll be able to share all the insights that we're seeing working across many of the e-commerce businesses that we're working with that we think could work for you. And then from there, we can actually outline an action plan specifically for your business, whether that's for Q4 or for any of your peak day promos or just overall, for the entire year. If you guys enjoyed this video, I would appreciate if you dropped a like as usual. If you guys have any questions about anything that I covered in the video, drop it down in the comments below. I'll make sure to get back to you guys. And of course, if you guys wanna see more videos like this, make sure you subscribe to the channel. And with that said, I'll see you guys on the next one.